Hello, good morning. Welcome to St Mary's Halesworth on Saturday the 9th of October. Welcome whether you are joining us on Facebook or YouTube. If you'd like to join in person, I'm here eight and six most days. And also you may join on Zoom. The codes for that are on the Blythe Valley Church's website and Facebook page. And we're streaming on that Facebook page. It's a commemoration of Dennis and Robert. <clears throat> I'll focus, I think, on the former. If you'd like to follow, the words are in Common Worship Daily Prayer. There's a book eponymously titled, and uh, Morning Prayer on Saturday in Ordinary Time is towards the beginning, after prayer during the day. Online, Aremus Daily Prayer or the Church of England's website also have the words, and one may download apps for Apple or Android devices. Likewise, O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. To the song of God's praise. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul is a thirst for you. My flesh also faints for you, as in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So would I gaze upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. Your loving kindness is better than life itself, and so my lips shall praise you. I will bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My soul clings to you, your right hand shall hold me fast. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. <clears throat> we have three psalms appointed this morning. These may be found at the back of the book, if that's where you're following, in the Psalter. Psalms 96, 7 and 100. We open and close each with the refrains. We say the glory be as we return to the refrain. If you want to, you are welcome to use the prayer that follows each psalm. We'll pause briefly to allow people to read that in silence. I'll read straight through, and uh, if had we had anybody with us that we could hear, we would read by alternate verses. So you're welcome to read the even-numbered verses, or all of them, as we make our way through Psalms 96, 97, and 100. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell out his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He is more to be feared than all gods. For all the gods of the nations are but idols. It is the Lord who made the heavens. Honour and majesty are before him. Power and splendour are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honour and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the honour due to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is king. He has made the world so firm that it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. 
Let the fields be joyful and all that is in them. Let all the trees of the wood shout for joy before the Lord. For he comes, he comes to judge the earth. With righteousness he will judge the world and the peoples with his truth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. You, Lord, are most high over all the earth. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his enemies on every side. His lightnings lit up the world. The earth saw it and trembled. The mountains melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declared his righteousness, and all the peoples have seen his glory. Confounded be all who worship carved images and delight in mere idols. Bow down before him, all you gods. Zion heard and was glad, and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of your judgments, O Lord. For you, Lord, are most high over all the earth, You are exalted far above all gods. The Lord loves those who hate evil. He preserves the lives of his faithful and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Light has sprung up for the righteous and joy for the true of heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks to his holy name. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You, Lord, are most high over all the earth. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. May be joyful in the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God, it is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The Lord is gracious, his steadfast love is everlasting. Scrolling past our first reading as presented and the link to Second Chronicles, which we will make use of in a moment, to the canticle, a song of Jerusalem, our mother. Turning back in the book to Saturday morning prayer during ordinary time. Thus says our God, I will comfort you, you shall see and your heart shall rejoice. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, says the Lord. Rejoice with her in joy, all you who mourn over her, that you may drink deeply with delight from her consoling breast. For thus says our God, you shall be nursed and carried on her arm. As the mother comforts her children, so I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. You shall flourish like the grass of the fields. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Thus says our God, I will comfort you. You shall see and your heart shall rejoice. From Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints, Dennis, also called Dionysius, was born in Italy at the beginning of the 3rd century and was sent to convert the peoples of Gaul along with five other bishops. On reaching Paris, he established there a Christian church on an island in the Seine. He and others were martyred in about the year 250, and an abbey was later built over their tombs dedicated to Dennis. 
The church became the burial place of French monarchs and Denis has long been regarded as the patron saint of France. So turning back to morning prayer, <clears throat> if you are following online, there is a link at the bottom of the Maccabees reading, which is apocryphal, as most people probably don't have apocryphas either within the main body of the text in a Jerusalem Bible or separated in a slightly less Roman Catholic version. We may have more Protestant without it represented at all, even in an apocrypha between the first and the second covenants. So we tend to refer simply to the standard Hebrew canon. Second Chronicles 24, 1 to 22 is therefore our first reading. In the history section of the Hebrew scriptures, the second book of Chronicles, large number at the top of the paragraph is the chapter number 24, and the verses 1 to 22 are the small numbers in the text. Second Chronicles 24, beginning at the first verse. Joash was seven years old when he began to reign. He reigned for forty years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Zibiah of Beersheba. Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord all the days of the priest Jehoiada. Jehoiada got too wise for him and became the father of sons. He became the father of sons and daughters. <clears throat> Some time afterwards, Joash decided to restore the house of the Lord. He assembled the priests and the Levites and said to them. Go out to the cities of Judah and gather money from all Israel to repair the house of your God year by year and see that you act quickly. But the Levites did not act quickly. So the king summoned Jehoiada the chief and said to him, Why have you not required the Levites to bring in from Judah and Jerusalem the tax levied by Moses, the servant of the Lord, on the congregation of Israel for the tent of the covenant? For the children of Athaliah, that wicked woman, had broken into the house of God and had even used all the dedicated things of the house of the Lord for the Baals. So the king gave command, and they made a chest and set it outside the gate of the house of the Lord. A proclamation was made throughout Judah and Jerusalem to bring in for the Lord the tax that Moses, the servant of God, laid on Israel in the wilderness. All the leaders and all the people rejoiced and brought their tax and dropped it into the chest until it was full. Whenever the chest was brought to the king's officers by the Levites, when they saw that there was a large amount of money in it, the king's secretary and the officer of the chief priest would come and empty the chest and take it and return it to its place. So they did that to so they did day after day and collected money in abundance. The king and Jehoiada gave it to those who had charge of the work of the house of the Lord, and they hired masons and carpenters to restore the house of the Lord, and also workers in iron and bronze to repair the house of the Lord. So those who were engaged in the work laboured, and the repairs went forward at their hands, and they restored the house of God to its proper condition and strengthened it. When they had finished, they brought the rest of the money to the king and Jehoiada, and with it were made utensils for the house of the Lord, utensils for the service and for the burnt offerings and ladles and vessels of gold and silver. They offered burnt offerings in the house of the Lord regularly all the days of Jehoiada. But Jehoiada grew old and full of days and died. He was 130 years old at his death. And they buried him in the city of David among the kings, because he had done good in Israel and for God and his house. Now after the death of Jehoiada, the officials of Judah came and did obeisance to the king, and the king listened to them. They abandoned the house of the Lord, the God of their ancestors, <coughs> and served the sacred poles and idols. And wrath came upon Judah and Jerusalem for this guilt of theirs. Yet he sent prophets among them to bring them back to the Lord. They testified against them, but they would not listen. Then the Spirit of God took possession of Zechariah, son of the priest Jehoiada, he stood above the people and said to them, Thus says God, why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord so that you cannot prosper? Because you have forsaken the Lord, he has forsaken you. But they conspired against him, and by command of the king they stoned him to death in the court of the house of the Lord. King Joash did not remember the kindness that Jehoiada, Zechariah's father, had shown him, but killed his son. As he was dying, he said, May the Lord see and avenge. I was intrigued as I read this. Um, the history books in the Hebrew scripture um, sometimes have more or less exactly the same content but with a different slant. And this seems to me, if I remember right, from yesterday evening prayers reading, which is I think from Kings, it uh, was the same if not a very similar story. The um, idea that the priests were supposed to be gathering the tax and fixing the temple but they hadn't been, so the king steps in and it becomes a civic act. It's very similar to the main body of the story yesterday, even if the king's name was slightly different. But we are told typically in the Chronicles and Kings that this 
King Joash did what was right in the sight of the Lord, and he was supported by the priest. It's one of those features of the way the English, well, we have a written constitution, but the English uh, constitution works, that we have the head of the church, and uh, we have the queen, uh, and we have our archbishop and the church as established. We have this sort of strange arrangement where church and state are connected also by virtue of the fact that the privileged tended to have the first and second son of the big house, one gaining money from land in relation to civil life and the other gaining income from the land in relation to what we might call spiritual life, if the two can be separated, which perhaps arguably, and in my view, they can't. But after the story of fixing the church, after the king steps in and raises the tax, because that be a similar situation to, I think, some of the Nordic countries, maybe Germany too, there is a, a standard civic tax which supports the church. Maybe we need to think about that in our own country to sustain rural parish life, at least. But then the reading concludes that uh, after the death of Jehoiada, the people turn against God and stone a... Um, prophet that comes to them to tell them they need to restore their faith in the true God and for why as he says why do you transgress the commandments of the Lord so that you do not prosper and throughout the Hebrew scriptures uh, there is that idea that as people walk with God abide with God God will therefore abide with them and things will go well and even if we are not people of faith if we live according to a broader communal direction and instruction that is for the greater good of society Things will go better for us than if we plough our own furrow. So to Mark 16 from verse 9 to the end, we have the two endings, the shorter, uh, more authentic perhaps than the original, and the longer. So I will read them both. And all that had been commanded them, they told briefly to those around Peter, and afterwards Jesus himself sent out through them, from east to west, the sacred and imperishable proclamation of eternal salvation. The shorter ending. And the longer. Now after he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, from whom he had cast out seven demons. She went out and told those who had been with him while they were mourning and weeping. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country, and they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe him. Later he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were sitting at the table and he upbraided them for their lack of faith and stubbornness because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and proclaim the good news to the whole creation. The one who believes and is baptised will be saved, but the one who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. By using my name they will cast out demons, they will speak in new tongues, they will pick up snakes in their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing it will not hurt them. They will lay their hands on the sick, and they will recover. So then the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God, and they went out and proclaimed the good news everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by the signs that accompanied it. The first is more typically Mark. We read yesterday that the women <clears throat> went to see the tomb to embalm the body, and a young man wearing white, he's not described as an angel, was he, was he not, I don't know, tells them that Jesus is no longer there and they were to go to Galilee. <clears throat> and they flee in fear and terror, not speaking to anybody. And they tell Peter what they had seen. And then we're told Jesus himself sent out through them from east to west the proclamation of salvation. A very tidy, neat, condensed but sort of epilogue summary. The longer ending more or less says the same thing, but in more words, typically Mark-like, in that the first two paragraphs end, they would not believe it. <clears throat> they did not believe them. So it says the second time, the first time they don't believe the women, and the second time they don't believe the two who had been walking in the country. Maybe that's those two that had the Emmaus Road experience. But then we have that famous line, the Great Commission, go into all the world, proclaim the good news to the whole creation, not to just to humanity, 
the one who believes and is baptised will be saved. These signs will accompany those who believe. So it's not just a case of words, it's a case of miraculous inter interaction, intervention from God, not just for humanity, but for creation. And we will not be harmed. Arguably, people are harmed for faith, but in the end, they will be restored to fullness of life in God. And then we're told Jesus was taken up into heaven, sits down at the right hand of God. That's an ancient Hebraic expression for the work has been done. We don't sit down until it's done. There's an expression, isn't there? The show isn't over until the fat lady sings. He was taken up into heaven and sits down. His work is done. And he'll be honoured and praised, just the king, like the king or queen, the monarch sitting on their throne. But the Lord works with those who went out to proclaim the good news, confirming the message by signs. And so let us assert our belief in that as we say the responsory together back in morning prayer on Saturday in ordinary time. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other, that glory may dwell in our land. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your salvation is near to those who fear you, that glory may dwell in our land. To the song of Zechariah. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Shine on us, O God, who dwell in darkness, and guide us into the way of peace. Let us pray. Source of the Sabbath, air of peace, comforter, Advocate, three in one, one in three. On this day of rest, we determine to rest in you. We pray that you will rest in us. As we abide, may we take root, may we germinate, may we rise, may we mature. May we come to be the people that you would have us be. May we be prepared for that which lies ahead. May we be fruitful, persuasive, exemplary. We pray for those for whom this day will not be one of rest, those preparing for surgery, with a date, those still waiting, those in hospitality and utilities, those in farming, emergency medical, military services, people in prison, people seeking to escape from dangerous places, places where there is no food or where there is disease, people being sent back by the nations they have reached, hoping to receive welcome and hospitality. For those in places where the rule of law is not asserted by the majority, where people are part of the minority, black and minority ethnic, lesbian, gay, transgender, or even women and children, people at risk. We pray that they will know your peace, your protection, 
your provision. May we work for environmental and social justice, upholding our responsibility to go to all creation, that all lives, and indeed ecology, may be prepared, preserved, restored, in honour of your name. The Bethany Children's Trust feed for the World Prayer News on my PrayerMate app writes, by providing wheelchairs, therapeutic shoes and mobility aids, their partner in Zambia is literally transforming children's lives, building their independence and relieving the pressures on their family. We pray that the teams will be able to access materials for artificial limbs at affordable prices. There is a chronic shortage of such materials and a growing list of children in real need for them. From Christian Action Research and Education, we ask God's loving touch may be felt by people suffering today through the devotion and skills of nurses, doctors, therapists and family members at home, in hospital or hospices. We pray for more resources to provide palliative care for all who need it. From Green Christian, I shall endeavour not to close and delete the file before I open it today. The first of the four stated goals of COP26 next month is to secure global net zero by the mid or middle of the century and to keep to 1.5 degrees global warming or keep that target within reach. Countries are being asked to come forward with ambitious 2030 emissions reductions targets that align with reaching such a target overall. Countries will need to accelerate the phase out of coal, curtail deforestation, speed up the switch to electric vehicles and encourage investment in renewables. We pray that all nations will commit to that and we pray that there will be some way of weighting the voices of those countries that have not done the polluting but who suffer the most from the insecurities that are brought about by changes in weather as a result of climate breakdown. May their voice be loud and heard. May we as the Christian colonialist West, and indeed the uh, other political system blocks in China and Russia, heed and respond to those calls. Our Benefice Cycle of Prayer on Saturdays invites us to pray for our elected representatives, and so we do. MPs, down to those in our town, in the villages. We pray that you bless them, encourage them, heal them their hurts, give them hope, encouragement, enthusiasm to stand for what is right for our local people, to speak up for those disenfranchised, those impoverished, those suffering rural poverty, even amongst those with privilege and power in this place. We pray that they will represent all and not just those that might have elected them, that might have felt they might receive benefit from that process. We pray that they will be held to account, that they will be open to lobbying, that they will engage with their constituents. We pray that they will have rest and enjoy fullness of life. We thank you for our people moving on Saturdays to pray for those amongst our ministry team, me as the team rector, the person you know who will be joining me and us as team vicar in the months ahead, but we are yet to select them. We know the sort of person we're looking for and we're thinking we're going to fish for amongst our curates in this diocese. So the field is reducing, as it were, day by day. We pray to you for Jane and Alison and Linda each with their own concerns, ministries, hopes and fears. We pray that all will go well with them. We thank you for them as people, for their support, their solidarity, their calling, their wisdom, their love, their abilities and talents. The same for Vic and David, Anna, Jonathan, Diana and Wynne. As our associate priests, and readers and uh, locally trained elders, Margaret, Jason, Alison, Robert, Malcolm, John, Eileen and Janet, we pray your blessing on them. We ask that they might be encouraged as they see you working through them. May they be used as much as they will 
to sustain and support worship in all its diversity across our parishes. My Corona cycle on Saturdays, we pray for the emergency medical services again and look to the future. Concentrating on the future later today, we ask your blessing on the services, that they will have adequate investment, that there will be adequate staff, adequate protection for those that are caring, and the kit that they need to do the best professional job that they are trained and able to achieve, that they will not be hampered by lack of investment in the hospital facilities we pray that their interventions will pay dividends, that they will be encouraged as they recognise the assistance and help they have offered to those who are suffering and struggling with the disease. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The collect for Saturday morning from the book, which changes day by day rather than being the same from last Sunday through the week. Grant, Lord, that we who are baptised into the death of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, may continually put to death our evil desires and be buried with him. And that through the grave and gate of death we may pass to our joyful resurrection through his merits, who died and was buried and rose again for us. Your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.